G'day guys, welcome to G-Man Speaks. Today I'm gonna to take you through a play-by-play -play analysis of a story video by a YouTuber called Mina, and her story is called How I Got Stuck in a Six-Month Situation Ship. So let's have a laugh at it, guys, about how obvious it was that she was in this situation. Yep, no accountability shown on her side. Victim mentality. Story time of how I ended up in a six-month situationship <laughs> and by situationship yes i mean i never officially dated this man there's a lot to get into and i hope you guys enjoy the video yeah cool. no case four years ago i made a story time on that if you guys want to check it out but yeah i was just like very curious about things that i was kind of hidden from and like not talked about so boys was definitely one of them I so yeah so what she said then that i skipped over because i didn't want to see her advertorial for her intro that i find obnoxious those ones with theme songs was uh that she was excommunicated by her family so obviously she's from middle eastern background obviously she's stepped outside the boundaries of what they deem acceptable um, which I think is a pretty big thing for them to to get rid of a daughter. So she must have done something, and she plays it off as like she's the victim of that. Um, with through jibs and drabs and things she drops in. Now, guys, I probably watched about a third of this video, All right, but I thought it was very interesting to hear um, about how she uses a victim mentality and um, to talk about this story. Poor her, she had no idea what was going on. She was unaware. She was blissfully ignorant. Um, and shows, just, yeah, no, no accountability at all. And it's just the reason why I'm showcasing this because this is how a lot of women talk. They know damn well what they're doing. Um, but to the general public um, and to a lot of men uh, who don't know how women work, um, they always come from a place of they are a victim. Downloaded a dating app. I know, I know. I'm just going in with my Fenty Blur Stick in the shade nine so with my newfound freedom i ended up matching with this guy i thought he was really cute we talked for a bit online and it took a while before we like actually met up in person and so we went on a little date and by date i mean he came to my dorm room and we like watched a movie that was the date i just was so clueless about dating we had a really good time he was like really nice really sweet he was really nice to my roommate as well Yes, I did share a room with somebody at the time with my best friend. So let's just call him Jake. Let me describe Jake. So he was probably the most good looking guy that I had talked to at that point in my life. I thought he was so attractive and it wasn't just me. So I lived in a dorm and so all my friends like lived on the same floor as me. Both guys and girls would literally walk out just to see him when he would like come to see me. That is the power this guy had. He was just so objectively attractive. He was 6'4", he had green eyes, brown, curly brown <laughs> hair, which is like, for some reason, or not anymore, but it used to be my type. Um, okay, hang on. So, okay, basically she just told the, t uh, we already know where this is going. Um, Taylor's oldest time guy, six foot four, jacked model looking dude, um, has gone for chick far below him um, because he sees her as an easy outlet. Um, she gets caught up in the fields thinking that she's won the lottery uh, and that she's going to be able to lock this guy down um, when she has zero chance of that from the outset. And the guy has put her into the back of the VN category, right? Behind that cricket pavilion is all she's going. Um, as you see, she said the first date, he didn't take her anywhere. Uh, he didn't want her to be seen with anyone. Um, he just went to her dorm and watched a video. All right, good old Indiana Jones, the old Indiana Jones um, approach. That's what I used to do. I used to put movies on. Um, Netflix, get girls come around and go around to their house. Right, you put on Indiana Jones on Netflix to get about five minutes of the way through to it. Balls deep. Um. <laughs> so yeah, I was just like, there is no way that this guy is talking to me. I thought he was way out of my league. I was just, I was obsessed, okay? And he didn't go to university. So he was just like, I think two years older than me. He was working in trades or whatever, like he was a carpenter and like that's what he wanted to pursue because that's what his dad was doing, yada yada. Every time after work, after he was done work, he would hang out with me. We would go on dates, we went to the arcade, like I took him to my semi-formal, which was like a big thing, you know? Like I'm kind of claiming him, like I'm taking him out there, showing him to everybody. I thought he was putting in the work, but... I might have been a little wrong on that. He was a horrible texter, guys. Like, horrible texter. But I was okay with it because we saw each other almost every day. 
<laughs> Most people are not, especially young people. I could I could, I could take that excuse from a you know a middle aged or older person that they're bad at texting. Uh, young people, anyone up to forty or around that age, have their phone glued to the hand twenty four seven. If they don't, they're going to see if they don't see a message instantly. Um, yeah, sure, he worked on the tools and all that sort of stuff, so he probably didn't have his phone on him, maybe. Uh, I'll give him that excuse. But generally, most people have the phone in the pocket. They feel it. They look at it straight away, all right? People are almost inseparable from their phones these days. So I don't think it's... When people say, I'm not great at texting, that just means, no, no, I'm saying other people and um, just take that as a predefined excuse to explain my poor communication skills and shady behavior. <laughs> That's exactly what he's done. He wasn't too poor with communicating because he probably had some light texts with her. He would go to her house every day. She didn't seem to care about the text because you'd turn up to her house every day. Why do you think he was turning up there? Because it was an easy layup. He had her in the bag, this young little cutie. I think she's good looking. Right? He got this young little cutie that he was just busting the guts out of every day. How good is that as a 22-year-old guy? And like, this went on for a while like months like i think at the three month four month mark i was kind of like why haven't i been cuffed yet i also just realized <laughs> that i was always initiating everything like he was nice he liked hanging out with me he always said yes to when we hung out but like he would never initiate it first and it was kind of annoying i was like why why does it look like i'm obsessed with you even though i was actually another thing about him so he was um a, a dealer maybe sold some things that are not so legal. This is why you never tell women things about you too much, guys, especially when you're putting them in the P&D category. So once again, this guy's overshared. He's told her things. He's told him uh, illegal activities he might be involved in. Guess what? If she gets her nose out of joint, she can uh, bring you down pretty quick. So guys, advise, if you, especially if you're putting women, um, you know you're never going to be any more than just a guy who goes and fills her guts up. Uh, do not tell her much about you. Just tell her surface level stuff. You learn that the hard way as a man. I can tell you what, um, oversharing can be your downfall. As they say, loose lips sink ships and don't let your ship be sunk by a woman who uh, is wrathful. So he did have a lot of money. Like he had a lot of cash. He was oh, so stingy with it. Like good on this him. man never paid for shit. He never bought me shit. And it was kind of annoying. Like I, like when we would go out for dinner, I remember like I wanted to treat him and I paid for it and like I got him a Christmas gift. Oh my God. And I had no money at this time. I was broke because I was kind of struggling after getting kicked out and like didn't really know how to make ends meet. I was working at Walmart, so I wasn't making a ton of money. He was making way more money than me and I was still like treating him and gifting him and blah, blah, blah. Oh my God, I forgot to- So what does this tell you? So what does she tell you and she's admitting to it? If a girl likes you, you could- Give her nothing, like in terms of monetary uh, compensation to see you. Like guys always leave with money. They want to take them out on dates thinking that if I take them on a really nice date, it's going to increase the chances of her jumping into bed with them. Only if she really likes you, it might increase the chances. But if she already really likes you, she's probably worked out in her mind before that even date happens that she's going to do that. So you're going and spending extra money, maybe buying the, um, you might upgrade the meal. You might, instead of going from KFC or Subway, um, you've gone down to Sizzler. You've gone down to Smorgies, um, or maybe you've even upped it from there. You've taken her to a nice little um, seafood restaurant. You're buying her the crayfish, the lobster, spending 300 bucks, fill her up with some nice plonk, thinking you're going to get some action. What do you get? Jack shit. It makes no difference. So if you're this kind of guy, you don't have to spend a cent, and girls will spend money on you. I've had it happen, guys. Girls buy me things, presents, uh, vouchers um, for shops, like electronic vouchers, send them across to me. Um, just, you know, as a gift out of nowhere, you know, it's something like Rebel Sport or something like that, as I'm a pretty sporty guy. Um, I'd have food bought for me. They'll turn up with pizza. Back when I was smoking, they'd bring me cigarettes. I've given up cigarettes now uh, for quite a while ago, but I was smoking a shitload of darts a few years back, and they'll just bring them for me. They're expensive here in Australia. A pack of the cigarettes, what is it, 40 bucks? Bringing them for me because I just asked them to, and they just did it. I didn't pay them for them. So if... You are the kind of guy they're going to chase around um, that they are looking up to, that they're trying to lock down. A lot of these girls who feel like they're onto something that it's a little bit out of their league, um, they'll invest in you with small little gifts and things like that, right, to show that they're a pick-me girl, which uh, is not a bad thing. I think it's good um, for most men. But for guys who are like me, like monster hunters, with no intention of ever wanting to settle down or or, or or be a boyfriend to these girls. You just exploit that completely. You know, you, it's almost like you understand what it's like to be a girl sometimes in a dating market because 
they do they bend over backwards for you. It didn't happen all the time. I'm not saying it was every girl, but it would happen um, on occasion. A girl is just right into you, just red hot on you. They'll just bend over backwards, guys. I would drive three hours to your house. They'll turn up with a pizza. Like, don't believe me, it happens. Bronze before I put my powder on, whatever. I'll fix that in a sec. I kind of suggested that he should take me out and he like agreed because I took him out for dinner um, to Moxie's, like we went to, and I spent a decent amount on that bill even though I was broke, like I needed to pay rent or figure out how to pay for my tuition. Anyways, um, I was down bad, okay, leave me alone. He said that we would go to the keg and I was so excited. I was like, oh my God, my unofficial man is taking me to the keg. Wow, I feel so special. Okay. I made like some tips or whatever at work. I wasn't making like a huge amount of tips. The place that I was working at, I was working as a banquet server, so my tips weren't that great, but like, um, occasionally the guest there would tip me a decent amount of money Like I think I got a hundred dollars one day and I was like telling him about it And he's like nice more money for the keg <laughs> My jaw literally dropped when he said that I was like are you Like I hope you're joking right now I he later on joking. he said he was joking nah, about it wasn't. But I was like that is not a funny joke Bitch I'm not paying for anything I am not paying for the keg Like I would but I just wanted him to treat me Like I wanted to feel special I wanted to feel like a queen I it's amazing because these girls I'll never see it like this guy will be using them up blatantly extracting things out of them effort um, for them and not giving much back like low effort stuff I'll be guilty of doing this but then there will come a time it might be two months three months four weeks however long each girl is different um, where they start going hang on I want to start seeing a bit of a commitment going on here and that's fair enough right uh, they want to be cuffed right that was a comment that she used and they fall off the radar <laughs> because they work out you're not going to do it. So they will crack this shit, so they'll start demanding shit, start giving you ultimatums, stuff like that. Um, you know what happens when girls give you ultimatums, guys? You just uh, you don't comply and, and let them self-sack themselves. Uh, let, let them make themselves redundant. You don't have to do anything. That was my strategy all the time. Um, you know, I, I never liked being the guy who would be ruthless and, and break up with women. I'm always used to just let it drag on um, and fade off and let them break up with me, let them have a win. And there was a reason for that because I had learned a lot about women in my past. I've seen the wrath of women who are angry and are always like for them to feel like it's ending on their terms, even if it's illusion that it was. And I'd already, you know, checked out well in advance and was just giving them uh, breadcrumbs, you know, just hoping that they'll just tell me that they don't want to see me anymore because you just don't want to deal with it. You don't want to deal with the drama and you've got a whole bunch of other chicks on the go. I really deluded myself literally up until like last year in terms of like spending money on guys just really being in my masculine energy and i also noticed like while we were on this date i was just asking him about like kids and stuff it wasn't a weird conversation at that point like we were talking for a while so i was like oh like what are your plans for the future like do you ever plan on getting married what are your goals in life whatever and he's like i never want to get married because his dad went through like three divorces which actually I met his dad, which was crazy. And his dad was like, oh my God, aren't you Jake's friend? And I was Legend. like, yeah, he broke my heart. Anyways, he was telling me how his dad has been through all these divorces, whatever. And he just doesn't want to get in a relationship because he doesn't want to deal with that. Like he just wants to live his life and be chill and whatever. And I should have taken that as my sign. Also, I'm- A sign? It's in, it's in flashing red lights. This guy couldn't say more things to a woman. I used to do this too. You can't say more things to a woman to try and put them off you and give them the hints. Because you might, you know, you do grow fond of people, but you might not want to commit and the woman's hanging around for you to commit. And we all know what happens when you commit, guys. It all turns to shit most of the time. So that's why a lot of guys won't do it when they're juggling women because they can juggle women and move on to them for the fun part over and over again for that first two, three months, right? He was telling you in flashing lines, he doesn't want to get married. He's telling you, he's backing up that assumption uh, or that presumption or that statement, sorry, by providing an example that his own father had been divorced three times, probably saw his own dad get divorced, scraped, all right? He doesn't want to follow in his father's footsteps. Good on him. He's learning from his father's mistakes. He's not making them for himself. He's told a girl to her face, which is basically saying, when a guy says something like that, he's saying, oh, I'm never, ever committing to you. Don't ever entertain and even think about it. He's telling her, oh, that might be a sign. <laughs> what? Charlotte Tilbury blush in pinkasm. 
I should have taken that as my hint, but your girl was the Lulu. Mm, but I can change his mind and I can be the one that he dates and marries and whatever. Good on ya. Oh. You can't, you can't be done. If a guy has put you in a certain category, I think it's almost next to impossible uh, for the guy to change his mind. It's just, I'm not bragging. Um, I've done it many times. But you cannot change your mind. You put him in a in a bucket and that bucket has an expiration time um, timer on it. Uh, so you might put him in, a, in the pump and dump category. It might be a few uses, uh, that category, or it might be a certain time, but eventually, you know, you don't care. You don't, couldn't give a stuff if they fade off and complain and blow up and, and, and carry on, right? So if you're in that mindset, they're then then trying to manipulate um, and you know give you ultimatums, saying, "Well, if, you know, I want to see a commitment, otherwise I'm fucking off." I mean, that's the best. That's the best thing. I oh, say, "I can't be with you. Sorry, I've had a great time," and they fuck off all angry, um, thinking that they've dumped you. Classic. But what are, what are we? What are we taking out of this? These are some very common themes that a lot of guys talk about, especially a lot of guys who have been experienced with womanizing. Um, this, this woman is telling us from her own mouth that she's done those exact things that men laugh about when they, these women complain about it, which is being blatantly used up with a guy who's non-committal, who's blatantly telling her he doesn't want anything from her, and she's getting upset that she's been put into a situation ship. She has, she's put herself there. He didn't even put her there. She's stuck around and let it happen. right? He's told her. Right, he's been honest. You could be honest. You could tell them, guys, so you're blue in the face that you're not interested in anything, right? And they will be like that. They'll think, oh, they might hang around for a little bit longer. You'll change their mind. I've just got to show you how good they are or whatever. But there's a reason why we put a lot of these girls in the categories. I can see why this guy's probably done it. She, I think she would be a bit of a handful. I think she'd be quite um, annoying as cute as she is. I think she's cute. I think she's attractive. Absolutely, you'll put her in and snap her in half in the back of the VN on top of the Grey Nichols cricket pads. But dealing with her as a girlfriend, I don't think that'll be um, a pleasurable experience. Men these days just aren't thinking of marriage, and it's really fucking annoying. Anyways, he <laughs> says he never wants to have kids. He said uh, he wanted to get a vasectomy. This man, he was really trying to tell me that he did not want to date me. I didn't see that at the time. I was just like, ooh. He likes me. We're talking, we're talking. I meet his mom. I meet his sister who actually went to the same university as me. Sorry, I don't know why my camera's still taking. His grandparents, bro, I met the man's grandparents. Big mistake though. He is leading her on the fact that he's letting her actually meet, um, meet his family. Like, I think that's pretty shit. Let's speed this one up. Let's see, we just get at 1.25. I reckon that'll speed this up a bit. She's talking a fair bit of shit here and she's ranting. Parents, like, what the actual heck? Also, how awkward was it, like, seeing his mom the next day, like, in the morning? I'll never understand white people, but what? Oh, also, something interesting about him. Um, he said that his type, this is important, he said his type was, like, Arab, Middle Eastern looking girls, so someone like me. And it's because he grew up around a lot of Arab girls, so that just ended up being his type, whatever. Okay, we get it, like, you're fetishizing me. Sorry, guys, I know that you get some of you guys have asked me to do this. I can't, I can't do it. It's like, sounds like they're full blown tweaking, right? Um, so I'm going to have to go back to normal speed. But what, what is it when guys say things to gas women's head up? They'll say anything. They'll say, you know, I love Middle Eastern girls. I love Somalian girls. Whatever whatever background they're from, they're going to try and make that girl feel special to keep her on the hook. And he like made it, he made it a point to say that he did not like white girls. He's like, ugh, white girls are gross. Like, first of all, well, why, why is there so much self-hatred going on here? Like, why you're also white? I don't know why you're hating white <laughs> What's girls. What's self-hatred? Um... Love it. But yeah, he made it a point to be like, I don't like white girls. Like, I like them exotic. <sighs> well, it's been six months at this point. What the hell? Nothing has been made official. Like, I was really bad at communicating, but it was obvious that I wanted to date. So COVID happened. I have to leave the city for a while. And like, I just need, this is like the perfect time to either make it official or if he's just not about it. To like end things off because i'm gonna be away for a while i'll be able to get over him spend the last day with him i couldn't muster up the courage to talk to him about it because i knew i would just cry so i decided to send him a snap video right before like as i'm packing up getting ready to leave for good uh, from my dorm so i sent him a video i'm literally crying in this video kind of expressing how i feel how i you know, I can't keep talking to him if he doesn't want to make things official and like I'm really upset about it and I don't want to keep hanging out. And you know what this man responds with? 
he says, don't worry, Mina. All good things come to an end. <laughs> Legend. Six months, guys. Six months of seeing this guy almost every single day. What do you think was going to happen? He told you from like two weeks in or something. He wasn't even interested. He was coming over, smashing your guts out in the dorm. Jeez. I, what is hard What is hard to understand here? But she tortured herself. She strung herself along. He didn't string her along. Yeah, sure. I don't think he should have done the whole family thing. That's a rookie mistake. But that's what he's done being a young man. Making mistakes. He probably won't do that again. But he's let, uh, she's, she's led herself on. Um, this guy told her he doesn't want anything. So he's literally just told her. She's then tried to put an ultimatum on him for something that he doesn't even want. And he said, cool. See you later, dude. All the best. Classic. Good things. He said, my dad said, my dad said all good things come to an end. I need a place to stay. You can stay at my... She, she... Anyway, this story keeps fucking going on and on and on. Basically, what happens is uh, it's pretty standard. Um, uh, I, I did watch it um, to understand if we're missing out on much here. It's a good bit, but I think it just drags on. I can't stand uh, her talking. So I'm going to summarize it for you. The guy fucks off. He gets a new girlfriend. He, she's really hot, but she's white. So he's told her he loves Middle Eastern girls. That one stabs her deep. Um, she starts stalking the uh, white girl on Instagram and follows her and still does to this day. And she thinks she's so beautiful and amazing and blah, 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 blah. Right? Went full CIA stalker. They broke up. Um, they broke up. But the thing is, he invited her over to his house saying that they broke up. All he wanted was a little bit of strange. He was going to cheat on his new girlfriend. She knew all about it. He banged her. And then he blocked and deleted her off all the apps and uh, everything like that. And she's still trying to cope and understand why he might have done it. End of story. Um, fully bryce fully Steve-O'd. And put it on the internet for everyone to uh, resonate with. So there's 120,000 views on this one. And the comments section here is pretty good. Why is situationships even more painful than a relationship breakup? Because you um, fantasize about a guy who probably didn't even exist. She's saying this guy was awesome, amazing, but probably she got to know him even more. He probably wasn't, right? They're saying they're entertaining, the story's relatable, blah, 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 blah. It's all chicks. <laughs> oh. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching. Um, really appreciate it. If you haven't subbed to the channel, uh, please do. And if you've made it 22 minutes and 30 seconds in, I greatly appreciate that. Thanks a lot.